remind yourself that these are not the words of men. They came through men, but they're not the words of men. They're the words of God, and they'll give you life. They'll change you from the inside out. Amen. Amen. And they work powerfully in you when you believe them and do them. So turn with us to 1 Corinthians 15th chapter. And then uh, 2 Corinthians, we're going to look at the second chapter, but that's just a page or so over. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15 and 57. Read it out loud with me. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it again. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does he give us? Victory. victory. Thanks be to God. Chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14 says, you can read this one with me too. 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Let's say that part again. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. What does he do? Causes us to triumph. In Christ. When? Always. Well, you win a few and you lose a few. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. Hmm? <laughs> no, he always causes us to triumph. Always causes us to triumph always, always causes us to triumph. You believe that? Yes, sir. Say it over yourself frequently. Yes. Right? Yes, Confess over yourself continual victory and triumph. Yes. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> Is it scriptural yes. for you to say, I always win? That's certainly not religion, is it? That is not what is preached from the pulpits of myriads of churches, is it? No. What's usually preached is you're probably going to lose, <laughs> but Jesus will be with you. Right? Hmm? And most everybody does lose. And you just need to be strong in losing. And give Jesus the glory <laughs> for losing. Now, you know, I'm, uh, huh? This is preached all over the world. In some form or fashion. But to actually believe he always causes us to triumph. Well, Brother Keith, that, that's spiritual. You know, you may be losing on the outside, but you're winning on the inside. Yeah, but it didn't say that. It just said, thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph. Now, we talked about this before, 
that both the previous verse, verse 1557, and this one, 214, is not past tense. Not thank God who gave you the victory. Not thank God who caused you to triumph. This is a, an area of thanksgiving that not as many practice. This is thanking God for what hasn't happened. <laughs> thanking God for victory and triumph that is not yet manifest. This is how faith people do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is how you do it when you walk by faith. When you walk by sight, you only thank God for what you see and know has happened. But when you walk by faith, you go ahead and thank God for the healing Amen. when your body's racked with pain. Amen. When you walk by faith, you go ahead and thank God for plenty of money to pay all the bills when the creditors are calling and they're piled up on the table. <laughs> you thank God then. Amen. <laughs> When you walk by faith, you get let go from your job or something happens and you don't have the, sore, the, the channel of income that you normally had while other people go get drunk. <laughs> other people leave cussing and mad and bitter and throwing stuff. Faith people leave thanking God Amen. for their new and better job. Amen. Oh, come on now. And because of that, you cannot keep a faith man down. You, just, you can't keep a faith woman down. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because no matter what happens and what they're dealing with, they'll just keep thanking God for the victory <laughs> until they're experiencing the victory. Oh, yeah. Do we have any faith people in here in this Faith Life Church? Do we? Wouldn't that be sad to have a Faith Life Church and, and no faith? <laughs> That'd be sad. But I'm glad that that's not that way. It's not that way. And not only do we have some faith in the Faith Life Church, but we're growing in it. It's getting stronger in us. And we're learning more how to walk in the God kind of faith, which is the victory that overcomes the whole world. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Go with me to uh, Ephesians, please. The fifth chapter. I, I could read these to you. Might be able to quote them to you, but let's just turn and let our eyes rest on them. Ephesians 5. We're not just readers of the Word. We're not just hearers and talkers about the Word or listeners to the Word. Tell me what we are. We are we're doers of the Word. Well, are we doing this one? Ephesians 5 and 20. Ephesians 5, 20 says what? Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sit out loud. Giving thanks always for all things. Now, that's all manner of things and all areas. Giving thanks when? Always. When? Always. If we're doers of this verse, when would we be thanking God? <laughs> if we had done this verse this past week, when would we have thanked God? Monday morning, Monday afternoon, 
Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon. Might have had a problem, forgot about it Tuesday night. <laughs> but we'd have got the victory for sure by Thursday evening. And, of course, with Friday night coming on, you want to get straightened back up. <laughs> now, if you're doing it always, that means you are thanking God always, all the time. Go to uh, 1 Thessalonians, 5th chapter. 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. And 18, 518, 1 Thessalonians. What does it say? In everything. In everything. Give thanks. And it gets stronger. Why? Oh, Brother Keith, I'm looking for the will of God. I found it. I found, I found it right here for you, brother. I got it. I got you. I got the will of God for your life right here. Do I? Did I find it? What's the will of God for you? <laughs> to give thanks in everything. In everything. In everything. What does that mean? In the church seat? Give thanks. In the car seat, give thanks. In your pajamas, <laughs> give thanks. In the kitchen, huh? In the backyard, in the workplace, in the good times, in the hard times, in everything, in everything. In everything and always give thanks. Anybody want to be a doer of this? Now remember what the Lord spoke to me some years ago. He said to me, Keith, would you like to know how to in increase your capacity to receive from me? And then he said, cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving. Cultivate. What does cultivate mean? Cultivate means you got to get out there with the hoe. Right? Right? You got to get out there with the tiller or the tractor. You got, you got to dig. You got, you got to do something. It means it's not going to happen just because you're watching it. You, you got to do something. You got to put forth the effort. You got to remind yourself. You got to make your mouth do its duty. You got to, you got to remind yourself to thank God. You got to express that thanksgiving. Cultivate. Don't wait on somebody to stir you up to be thankful. Stir yourself up. Amen. Cultivate a lifestyle. Well, now that's what he's talking about. When he's talking about always, that's lifestyle. In everything, that's lifestyle. That's not at church just for a few minutes. That's all the time, everywhere. Lifestyle. Cultivate a lifestyle of thanks. You know, every time the Lord tells you something, like he told me that, it, it's just another way of saying what he's already said. All, this is all the time. It, it, it's just something that would, would hit my spirit in such a way that what he's already said here in the King James clicks for me. But he said in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you, this is the will of God for me to give thanks in everything. Go to Hebrews. There are more of these, but I just wanted you to see these three right now. Hebrews, last chapter, 13. Hebrews 13. Bible said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Hebrews 13 and 15. 13.15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. And then he explains it. That is, 
What is the sacrifice and uh, the sacrifice of praise to God? Continue. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Now the margin may say confessing, which is part of the definition of thanksgiving. I'll explain. If you look up the word for thanksgiving, there are you know, numerous things you could read about it, but to my understanding it comes down to two basic concepts. One is being grateful. That makes sense to us, doesn't it? I mean... I'm quoting now from lexicons. To, to be thankful means to be grateful. But there's also another word that's used prominently. It is the word acknowledge, which is why you'd see the word confess. Acknowledge. You're not going to be thankful for something you don't acknowledge. And in keeping with the concept of acknowledging, I, I add this, but it's not really an addition to mine. I mean, this is not the lexicon quote, but if you read all the scriptures, you'll see it's there front, center, and back. Remembering. You're not going to be thankful for something you forget. Right? You acknowledge it. You're grateful for it. And so you confess it. You express it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You confess it. You don't just need to feel thankful. You need to say thankful. And you don't just need to express it and then forget it. What did the Bible say? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, he goes on to say, O oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now this begins to make sense as to how you could thank God all the time. Why? Because you're remembering all his benefits. That just takes up all your time. He got so many benefits and he done so many things for you that it just takes all the time thanking God, but that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Exactly. Because if you're not doing that, you're doing something else. And I assure you it's not as good as doing that. If you're not being thankful, what are you being? Now, we've already talked about this, and, and, and I didn't come up with that. The Lord gave me that. I know it's just real simple, but he, he gave it to, me, to my spirit. He said, is there a place in between being thankful and being unthankful? No. Is there a place where the, you're neither thankful nor unthankful? You're just nothing. <laughs> uh-uh. If you're not thankful, you have to be unthankful. Unthankful. There is no place in between. So if you're not being thankful, what are you being? You're being unthankful, and this is a huge problem. It's playing right into the hands of the enemy. Be thankful always. In everything, give thanks. The fruit of your lips continually. Giving thanks. Somebody say always. always. Continually. Continually. In everything. In everything. Give, thanks. Give thanks. Now let's go into some detail as to why and what happens when you do and what happens when you don't. Go with me to Luke, the 11th chapter, please. Luke 11. Anybody know what the title of our series is? Thanksgiving Victory. I changed it about two or three times. But, but that's where we are. You keep looking for what satisfies your spirit. 
I was close, but I wasn't right on. So you keep changing. You keep making adjustments until you get it to where your spirit goes, yeah, that's good. We're supposed to do that every day of our lives in everything we do. Yeah, and be thankful for it. That's right. That's right, Mo. <laughs> what does it mean to be thankful? Let's go over this again. To be thankful means to be grateful. It also means to acknowledge that gratitude, right? And in order to do that, you're going to have to remember it, right? You've got to remember what he's done for you. Well, if you're not thankful, what's the opposite of that? If you're unthankful, what, what is unthankful? You're not grateful. You're not acknowledging what has been done for you. And you are forgetting. Right? And if you're not doing that, there's a vacuum. Hmm? I'm not being thankful. You're not just going to do nothing. You're going to do something. If you're not being thankful, what are you going to be doing? <laughs> Complaining. <laughs> that is what fills the vacuum of unthankfulness, not being thankful. The Lord gave me this some years ago. I wrote it down. I mean, this is 30 years ago or so when we first started the ministry. Uh, maybe, maybe 25. I've been in the ministry a little while. Um, Doubt despairs, complains, and is sad. Faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. <laughs> Let me say it again. Think about it. Doubt does what? Despairs. What else? Complains, and is sad. What does faith do? Faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. Hmm? Doubt despairs. Doubt is down. Doubt doesn't smile. Doubt's not happy. Doubt is depressed. Hmm? And doubt is not remembering all the good things God has done for it. This is, one of, this is one of the big reasons why the enemy does everything he can to get you to forget about what God has done for you because it inspires your faith. You cannot help but start remembering what God has done for you and it boosts your faith. You start recounting when he did this and when he came through on this and what happened back here then when you prayed and believed God, what's going to happen to your faith? It's just getting stirred up. You go, and what, what's the conclusion? You'll go, and he'll do it again. And he'll do it again. So man, the devil knows he's got to keep you out of that. Or else why is your faith will just rise right up to the top. He's got to keep you in forgetful town. We don't remember any of that. And he's got to get you focused on something else. He's got to get you looking at something else. And while you're looking at the wrong thing, you're forgetting all of that. And down you go. Down, down, despair. And whatever you meditate on, whatever you get full of, that's what comes out of your mouth. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Right? Well, if you're full of despair, it's going to come out of your mouth. You're going to complain about what's wrong. And, of course, if you're looking at the wrong thing and, and complaining, it's going to make you sad. It's just going to get worse. The more you talk about how bad it is, you know, the devil will help you <laughs> with certain things. Won't he? <laughs> oh, he, you talk about a helper. <laughs> we know the Holy Ghost is the helper he'll help you with good things but the devil wants to help you with bad things let me tell you the kind of things he will help you with 
how sorry you are. And if you go, man, I have messed up so bad. I have just missed it so bad. I must have done this 900 times. The moment you do that, now you are yielding on his territory. And he has a right to come saddle right up to you and go, it's not 900. <laughs> you missed a few. It's 1,053. I know it. I know it. I'm so, I'm so bad. And so you, you're beating yourself up. You want to hit yourself over the head. And he says, hey, hey, let me help you with that. Give me that little hammer here. Give me, take my hammer. And he give you his 10-pound sledge. And between you and him, he'll beat your brains out. Until you absolutely have no confidence, no self-esteem, no hope, no vision. And it's your fault. Because you chose to look at it and dwell on it. And you gave him place. You could have been. Come on, help me out. You, you could have been thanking God. Now you get to thanking God, guess who will come help you do that? The greater one. The greater one will help you do that. He is sent to bring all things to your remembrance. Come on. That the Lord has said to you and to teach you all things and to guide you into the truth and show you things to come but not while you're complaining. Ain't gonna happen. Doesn't happen. Mrs. How can you say that? I'm about to prove it to you right now <laughs> with scriptures. Did you find Luke? Luke 11. You might say, well, Brother Keith, I'm already convinced. Already think of, not like you're going to be. Just, just sit right there. <laughs> you're going to be more convinced than you are right now about it. Luke 11 tells us the principle. Anybody excited about this besides me? I tell you, this is, this is, his word is so good, so good. Luke 11 and 34. Luke 11, 34, Jesus said, red letters, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, did you know that one of the definitions of doubt is duo, double? Why? Anybody remember James? Hmm? About being double-minded? What did it say? If you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Gives liberally, liberally to all men, upbraideth not, it will be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man, a duo, same word is for doubt and unbelief. A duo-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Well, they got it on the screen. Unstable, not going to receive. Why? You, you, you cannot look at two things and stay in faith. You can't serve two masters. Two contradictory things can't be true. You got to pick. And when faith picks the truth, now then it ignores the rest.
It's got to be possible to do the Word. And the Lord told us to give thanks always, continually, in everything. And that was just three verses. You know there's a lot more than that. Then it's got to be possible to do that, doesn't it? Got to be. So then, it's got to be possible to give thanks and look at Him and remember what He said and done no matter what is going on. No matter what kind of things have happened or are happening round about you, no matter how distressing they are, it's got to be possible. Yes. Doesn't it? Yes. To be thankful, and it's there, it's around you, you feel it, you're hearing it, but you're not looking at it. Amen. Well, on the other end of it then, it's also possible no matter how good things are, to be negative <laughs> and complain and find fault. No matter how blessed you are, no matter what you got, no matter how good it is, you can always be unthankful. <laughs> Isn't that right? We studied Ahab, didn't we? The man had everything. He had the best clothes in the country. He had the best house. He had the best food. He had chariots and horses and had all kind of gold and silver and money. But he became miserable because he wanted something somebody else had. It is a lie and a deception that if you could get that, you'd be happy. There will always be something else. There will always be something else to long for and be unhappy about. Always. Don't care where you live. Don't care what you're doing. Don't care who you're with. Can you see what I'm talking about? It's your choice. You or I, can be thankful no matter what's going on or we can be unthankful no matter what's going on. It's our choice. What do you choose? That would be a good one. That'd be the right one. This is what happens. The light of the body is the eye. It's what you're looking at. When your eye is single, when you're looking at the right thing, and that's all you let yourself look at. I said, that's all you will allow yourself to see. There's plenty of other stuff to see, but that's all you are allowing yourself to look at. Then what happens? Your whole body is full of light. Everything looks good to you. Your whole body, your whole life is just wonderful. You know, you, you might think that God's not fair. That if you looked at some people and listened to them, because there's some folks, just to watch them and listen to them, you'd think, man, they never have any problems. They just live an amazing, wonderful life. And then there's other people, they're saved, they love the Lord, but it seems like half of hell is on their case every day. I mean, they just, <laughs> this is one thing after another, and they just never catch a break. <laughs> Here's the truth. The truth is, I'm quoting Bible now, the same afflictions are happening to our brethren throughout the world. There's no temptation, test, or trial happen to you, but such as is common to man. We're all dealing with the same stuff. That's true. If you try to say, oh, nobody. I'm quoting Bible. It's just that some people choose to focus on the problems. Did you hear me? And talk about them. 
and complain. And others choose to ignore them and keep their eyes on God and give thanks all the time. And the ones that choose to be unthankful and focus on the lack and problems go down. And it gets worse and down and worse and it gets darker and darker. But those that keep their eyes on the author and finisher of their faith come out and they come up and the path of the just gets brighter and brighter the further you go to the full day sun. But both of them had the same opportunity to choose life. Choose Thanksgiving. Keep reading. The light of the body is the eye. Well, what do you do with your eye? You look at stuff. Therefore, with you, when your eye is single, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is evil, and again, this is that, that meaning of doubt and unbelief that you get into the double-mindedness, the duo, your body is also what? Full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in you, what you're looking at and what you're letting in you, be not darkness. If your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle does give you light. Does it matter what you look at? All the difference in the world. Life and death. Sorrow or joy. Victory or defeat. What's the title of the series? Thanksgiving what? How are you going to come out? Yeah, a lot of folks know how to give thanks after something has happened, but faith people give thanks before you see it and feel it, and faith people have learned this is how. You get in faith and stay in faith. This is how you tune out all the junk that's trying to bring you down. This is how you keep yourself focused, right? And stay connected to God and let Him give you what you need to bring you out. I believe it's one of the reasons why you see it so profusely throughout the whole Word of God. I mean just every chapter or every other chapter. Something about praising God, thanking God, giving glory to God. It's not because God needs you to feed His ego. It's for you. It's for me. We need to do this to keep our mind and eyes off of the wrong stuff and to keep connected with Him. And it's an act of faith. When you're thanking God for something that you haven't seen or felt yet, that's got to be faith. And that's all he needs. Gives him the perfect right to just get in the middle of your life and straighten it out for you. And all you're doing is saying, (laughs) thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for paying all my bills. Thank you, Lord, for healing my babies. Thank you, Lord for working out my marriage. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's all you got to do. It's so simple, so simple, so simple. You need demonic help getting it mixed up. (laughs) But the devil's all too ready and willing to help confuse you about it. And all you got to do is nothing. Just poke your lip out and not be thankful and dwell on bad stuff and you're already going into darkness now you see that in this verse go with me to Romans you see it even clearer Romans let's look at uh, two places here let's look at Romans 1 and then we'll look at Romans 8 While you're turning over there, go ahead and act on this right now just a little bit. Say, thank you, Lord. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us answers tonight. Thank you, Lord, for showing us what to do right now. People getting answers here, now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for plenty of money, plenty of money, plenty of money. Thank you, Lord, for the best jobs, the best jobs, the best jobs, best opportunities for our children and grandchildren, best opportunities, best opportunities for school and work and, and profession. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you. See, it's, it's, it's any, anybody, not even born again people, any sinner down the street can grab their side and go, oh, I just don't know what I'm going to do. This thing's just been killing me, I mean. Jesus, please heal me. Well, he, he already has. Lord, when are you, when you going to do something about this? Lord, I've prayed, I've fasted, I've turned in prayer requests, I've done everything. And this thing, I, it's distracting. It's hard for me to do my work. It bothers me. I know I've been grouchy and short with my spouse and my kids. God, you've got to help me on this. You're cutting off your own help. You can't see the answer looking at the problem. You're not looking at the answer. You're looking at the problem. You can't see the miracle looking at the need. It's very simple, but it's subtle too, isn't it? And because the whole world operates in negativity, it's so easy to slip into it, people around you won't even notice. Unless you've got some good faith buddies. <laughs> I'm not talking about confession police. <laughs> Holier than thou. Always hollering at you about your confession and don't watch their own. Hypocrites. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> but I'm talking about people that's going to be positive with you no matter what you say and do. You may be a balling and through your second box of Kleenexes and they'll look at you and go, ain't it good to know? that by His stripes we're healed. Amen. Ain't it good to know? Ain't it good to know that our God always supplies all our needs according to His riches in glory? Let's just thank God for that for a while. That's the kind of people you need around you. Not people, even, even though they love you and mean well, not people that go, oh, honey, I know, I know, I know it's awful. I just, it just hurts me so bad to see you going through. I, I just don't know. I've prayed, I stayed up all night last night praying myself, and I just don't know why the Lord won't help us on this. That's how you go down. takes no faith to do that. None. None. Sinners do that. Don't they? They feel bad about what they see. <laughs> Hold this place here. Go to 2 Corinthians. I, I need to give you this before we go there. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. need to make this real clear to you that this is not just my idea. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. 4, 18. 2 Corinthians. What does it say? While we what? Look not at the things which are seen. How do you do that? You see it, but you refuse to look at it. We look not at the things which are seen, but 
In other words, but we look at what? The things which are not seen. How you do that? How you look at something you can't see? That's exactly right, by faith. For the reason we don't look at the things that are seen is because the things which are seen are temporary. Temporary means subject to change, changeable, changing, have changed, will change, can change. If it changed from bad to good, guess what? You know it can change. If it changed from bad to good, it can change from good to bad. Excuse me, from, from good to bad, it can change from bad to good. Can't it? You know it changed? You know it can move. I says, man, I, I was doing so good, and then it changed. Well, glory to God. <laughs> we know it can change. <laughs> if it'll move one way, it'll move back the other way. You know it can move there. That's where it came from. <laughs> so no need looking at that, because that can be changed. No need looking at things that can be changed. Oh, you didn't get me on that. No need looking at things that, can, that are changing and can be changed. No need looking at that. Did your body change? Then no need looking at that. Did your finances change? They went from, from pretty good to not so good. Then no need looking at that. Don't look at that. That's changeable. That can change while you're looking at it. It can change from when you went to bed to when you get up in the morning. Be different, right? No need looking at that. You're looking at that, you're going to be a yo-yo Christian. <laughs> right? Because it, it's changing. It's moving. So ever what it's doing, if you're looking at that, that's what you're going to be. If it gets better, you're going to go, yay. If it gets worse, you're going to go, ooh. <laughs> if you're looking at that, right? So that's why we don't look at that. We look at something else. We look at the things that are not seen. Why? Because they are eternal. eternal. What's eternal? By His stripes. You were He. Eternal. 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 Glory to God. Look at that. Keep your eyes on that. Don't let yourself look at anything else. And you can do it. It's a choice. I didn't say it was always easy. But you can do it. Amen. By the grace of God. You'll be tempted many times to look at the other stuff. But just remind yourself, no, I don't need looking at that. That changes. I'm going to look at something that don't change. The fifth chapter. Just a few verses over. Chapter 5 and verse 7. What does it say? For... We walk by faith and what? Not by what we're seeing of the stuff that's changing. Now go back to Romans 1. That set you up a little better for this. Romans 1. Romans 1, verse 20. The invisible things. That's things we look at. Of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made. Even His eternal power and Godhead. So that they are without excuse. If your heart's open... When you look up in the night sky and you see the glory of the creation, you see something else. You see there's somebody behind that. Hmm? The majesty of the mountains and the oceans and the blue sky and the green grass and the myriad splendor of the creation of God. 
If your heart's open and you're honest, when you see it, you see something else that's not seen. And when you see that, what should you do? What should you say? You should say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing creation. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you, Lord. And if you would do that, according to Jesus in Luke 11, what would happen to you? Light would come into your eyes. And your whole body and being would be filled with light. But notice what happens when you don't. He's talking about people that don't. He said, uh, verse 21, he said, when they knew God, what they do? They saw this amazing creation, and even though they didn't admit it, they knew it was something behind it. You have to. But they chose not to acknowledge him, and they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. They what? See, they didn't acknowledge it, and they weren't grateful, and they didn't express it. And so what happened to them? Their foolish heart was darkened. Darkness came over them and came on them. Listen to the New Living Translation. It says, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship Him as God or even give Him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. You know, it goes on, they, they made idols and did all of the kind of stuff. I'm telling you, have you seen some of the stuff that people replace God with? Absolutely. I better stop right there. The result was that their minds became dark and confused. The English version says their thoughts have, com have become complete nonsense and their empty minds are filled with darkness. How'd they get this way? Come on, help me. How'd they get this way? Not acknowledging God and not being thankful. What happens to you when you don't thank God? You get stupid. <laughs> I know you might not like that word, but it's just the truth. You get dull and darkened and dumb. Things are right in front of your face and you don't see them. You got things all around the blessing of God and you're not even thankful for one thing. You get to the place where you don't believe life's worth living. And I can't go on. Sad. Confused. Your eye is looking at the wrong thing and darkness has got in you. I mean, this you've had experiences with yourself and with other people, right? Darkness got in. And I, I doubt seriously there's one of us in here that's made it through our whole life. And never done this. Oh, that was too weak. <laughs> you going to sit here and tell me that you never had a day where you were unthankful and you got down and depressed? Did it get dark in your room? Did it get dark in your car? You know why? Because it was dark between your ears. <laughs> Why? Come on, tell me. Why did it happen? You, do, you wouldn't acknowledge and thank God in the situation. You decided to look at the problem. You decided to look at the need. You decided to look at the lack. And when you make the choice to look at the problem and talk about the problem and complain about the problem, it starts getting dark. And the further you go, the darker it gets. And the darker it gets, the less you can see. 
That's what happens when people get suicidal. It's completely dark. They can't see any way out. They can't see any answer. They can't see any hope or any help. But you don't get there just by waking up in the morning. You get there by choosing, either ignorantly or knowingly, by choosing to not acknowledge God Amen. and focus on the problem. You've done it. I've done it. But let's let those days be done forever. Hmm? We saw Ahab come in there. What did he do? Could he have been thankful for all? God made the man king. Could he have been thankful for all the stuff he had? Could he? Man, he came in there and piled up on the bed, put his head in the pillow, cried, wouldn't eat. You think it was dark in there in his room? How would it have felt if you'd have walked in there? Does he need a pat on the back? No. <laughs> yeah, something stronger than that, right? I mean, he needs to get up and get out of that bed and quit feeling sorry for himself. He doesn't need somebody to pat him and hug him. He's yielding to the devil. You've been there. We've all been there. But how can you come out of every situation? In every thing. Always. Continually. When? Everywhere. In every. Is it possible, no matter what has happened to you, to lift up your hands and thank God for something good? Is it possible? It's possible. It's possible. Go to, you're in sec, where are you Romans, right? Go back to 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. I would appreciate you believing God with me. This is so big, but I'm going to go ahead and thank God for. <laughs> showing me exactly how to do it and where to go and what to do. It's so easy to slip into the darkness to look at the wrong thing, think and talk the wrong thing. But if you discipline yourself and train yourself day after day, then it's just the most natural, normal thing in the world for you to thank God night and day. That's just normal life for you. And people will think that you're not real. <laughs> They'll think they can't be that happy all the time. <laughs> they just, you know, everybody's got problems. That just can't be real. But it is. I said it is. Doesn't mean you don't have feelings. But it's your choice what you look at. Somebody says, it's my choice. It's up to me, it's up to me. What, I look at. what I look at. Now, when I say look at, you know, I'm including. You're looking at things not seen. How do you do that? That includes what you let yourself think about and focus on and listen to and talk about. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at it mentally and spiritually. And he said they became unthankful. And their foolish heart was darkened in 2 Corinthians 7 and uh, 9. He wrote a letter to them that was very corrective and very strong. And they needed it. And it shook that place up, man. It shook it to the core. And uh, <laughs> there was some repenting and crying, and making things right. And there was a lot of feeling bad, because it messed up so bad. And he writes them after this. Verse 9, he said, I'm rejoicing. <laughs> and that's what he did all the time. You ever read Philippians? Hmm? Four chapters over there? You ever read that? That's where the verse is. Rejoice in the Lord. 
always. And again, I say, rejo you know, we understand he wrote that from a jail cell. And if you look through the chapter, every chapter he's talking about rejoicing. Rejo I mean, read every chapter in circle where it says joy or rejoice. And toward the end of it, that's where he punches it up and says, rejoice all the time. This is a man eating prison food. Might not have had a good bath in a long time. Sleeping on a terrible, you know, piece of junk or the, the stone floor. or He's in a bad, stinky, smelly, dark place. But he wasn't looking at it. <laughs> is it possible, no matter where you are, to be thankful and rejoice. No matter what's going on around you, to be thankful and rejoice. He's proof. You know, that happened with Joseph. A lot of people in Joseph's situation would have got bitter, wouldn't they? Your own family want to kill you. Your own brothers, and they finally decide, oh, here's a better deal. Sell him. Ain't no need to just kill him. You don't make no money. We'll sell him and make some money. Sold him into slavery like a, like a cow. You could get bitter. He's young. He's got a promise in life in front of him. Now it's all gone. It's over. Ain't no college. Ain't no career with dad. Ain't no nice clothes and chariots. And You belong to somebody. You do what they tell you from the time your eyes open to the time you lay down. But he didn't let it get to him. He kept the victory. He believed God. God prospered the man as a slave. And he had so much success that his owner turned over his whole business to him. And he's running it. And the Bible said he was a prosperous man. He was. Even though he was a slave. People saw him when he came to town doing Potiphar's business. And they said, mm, man, who is that? That's Potiphar's slave. No way. <laughs> they thought, who, what business does he own? Who is he? Because he didn't let it get him down. He didn't get to looking at the offense and, and get bitter. And then Potiphar's wife lied on him. Not only is he a slave now, he's in jail, in the, in the worst place. And read it. When they put the king's baker in there and the king's cupbearer, the Bible tells us they turned the jail over to, to Joseph yeah. and let him run it. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Because of what was in his life and what was on him. But you can tell so much about how he's dealing with things. He comes in and sees the baker and the cupbearer. And he said, this is a Keith Moore paraphrase. Now go read it for yourself. He said, what's wrong, boys? Why are y'all so down? <laughs> they could have said, because we're in a dungeon. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> we ain't had a decent meal in a month. Because they're th talking about killing us? Even there, he wouldn't look at it. He wouldn't look at the concrete. Come on. He wouldn't look at the iron bars. He wouldn't look at the terrible food. He wouldn't look at what he didn't have. That's right. That's right. The Psalms tells us he held on to his dream. <laughs> he still believed in that dark, stinky place what God showed him as a boy that he was going to come out on top and there was going to be glory in his life. He still believed that. You can't defeat a man like that. No matter where you put him, he won't look at it. No matter what you do to him, he won't look at it. He keeps looking to God going, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doing miracles in this old jail. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving me favor with the warden. Thank you, Lord, for giving me favor with all these people. In fact, I just claim this whole place. 
for the Lord. You can't defeat a man like that. Makes no difference what's he, what he's in or what's around him or what's going on. Because he knows I'm still in charge of what I choose to look at. I may not be in charge of everything that's going on around me, but I am always in charge of what I look at and what I think about and what I talk about. So nobody can defeat me. Glory to God. Verse 9, I rejoice. Not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world works death. Two kinds of sorrow. Two kinds. Depends on what you look at. If you miss it and your heart condemns you, and you want to please God, and you don't want to miss it, and you don't want to come short, it can grieve you. It can bother you. You can have sorrow. It's not supposed to last long. I said it's not supposed to last long. Not any longer than you can run to God and confess it and repent. Hmm? But people yield to it. And in doing so, like we talked earlier, yield to self-pity. Well, I always wanted such and such. and I just never had it. And I've messed up so many ways, and I just guess now it's too late. And I, There's some ugliness in that. There's a, refusable, a, ref, a refusal to believe, a refusal to be persuadable. You're choosing to stay in that rut. Not receiving your forgiveness. Not letting God cleanse you and pick you back up. We can't impress God with how sorry we are. <laughs> you can't say, well, I, I know, you know, you said you'd forgive me, but I, I just hate it so bad. I just... <laughs> I just, I can't forgive myself. You better than him? He can forgive you? If he can forgive you, he knows more what you did wrong than you do. He, he is purity itself. He is the standard. If he can forgive you, why can't you? Who are you? Depends on what you look at. When people leave this world, we have to deal with grief, sorrow. It's a natural, normal part. People are supposed to get old and Live out their days. Lord tears is coming. Go. You see unnatural things too. Parents shouldn't have to see their children die before then. That's unnatural. But we should know that this is just a part of life. Right? The people that's in your life and in your family... They're not always going to be there. You're not always going to be there. You, you shouldn't be shocked when somebody goes home. This is the way of the world. Right? It's natural. It's normal. And when, so, when, it, when it happens, I didn't say if. I said when. How many believe in God to live a long time? Hmm, let me see. Long time. You sure? 
You know what that means? You're going to go to a lot of funerals. <laughs> if you outlive a lot of people, they're going to go before you do. Can you handle it? When my dad went home to be with the Lord, he, he's not that old. And those of you that have been here, you know how it happened. And it bothered me. And uh, for, the, for the first few days after that, I had sorrow. And I wasn't looking at the right thing. I was looking at he wasn't that old. There were things I wanted us all to do together. There were plans I had, things I thought would, would have been good and great. Things I wanted to do, I wanted to do for him. I wanted us to do together. Now, he's gone. And uh, I'm thinking about what could I have done? What should I have done? What, what could we have done? And, and uh, two or three days passed like that, and the Lord began to get a hold of me. This is what he said. I don't mean to heard a voice now, but he said, it's important to your dad that you see this thing right. That's revelation on many levels, isn't it? He's telling me what's important to my dad, who's there with him. <laughs> and dad is able to get something across to me through him. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? The Bible said, in Thessalonians, that we don't have to sorrow like them who have no hope. Didn't he say that? And we don't have to have this sorrow of the world that works death. And here I want you to differentiate. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'll say it and then I'll back up and explain it. There is a giant difference between grieving over somebody and missing somebody. It's okay to miss somebody and want to see them. It's not okay to be incapacitated with grief and sorrow. It works death. And it's up to us what we choose to look on as to what kind of shape we're going to be in and stay in. I wasn't in too good a shape for a couple of days. And he said, he said, it's important to your dad that you see this thing right. You're seeing it as weakness. Why did it happen? Why didn't we overcome? Of course, I'm a, I'm a faith fighter. That's just who I am. You too? Y'all with me? <laughs> when? He said, it's important to your dad how, that you see this thing right. You're looking at it as weakness and failure. He said, he died in faith. And he met me in faith. Boy, something went all over me. I thought, glory to God. Is there any better way to go? If somebody says, well, what if I die, I believe in God. You don't want to die any other way. <laughs> There's a lot we don't know. But what you do, want, you do know how to do is believe Him. And if everything didn't turn out exactly the way maybe it was provisioned for, was available to, you won't coming out of your mouth when you slip out of this body. And when you see Him, you're going, 
Father, I was believing you for all I knew how. He'll say, I know it, baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. Everything's fine. I know it. <laughs> right? You live by faith and you die by faith. You die by faith. That ministered to me for days. And then... I don't know what was it, two or three weeks after that. Boy, the Lord, I, I, the Lord woke me up in the, in the morning. And I mean, I won't, I won't go into the detail, but he, this is one of the most powerful experiences personally I've ever had with him. I won't tell you everything that happened because it's private and it's personal, it's holy. But man, he'd, he did some things in me. And when he was through with me, there was no grief in me. It wasn't there. None. None. <laughs> he showed me what to look at. Oh, there are times I miss him. I'd like to see him. That's just normal if somebody lived on the other side of the country. Right? And you're not seeing them, and you know it's going to be a while till you see them again. You miss them. You'd like to see them. That's okay. That's not the same thing as grieving and sorrowing like those who have no hope and saying, we lost him. We didn't lose him. He just moved. <laughs> People say, sorry for your loss. I didn't lose him. He just moved. Heaven is just as real as Branson. Just as real. Just nicer. This is what the Lord said to me about this. Because I was thinking, he was too young. We should have had these years. We should have had this. We could have done that. Now we won't get to. We could have done that. I'm think, now, now, now analyze what am I doing? What am I looking at? What am I looking at? Am I being thankful? No, I'm not. Is this okay? No. See, people think it's okay, but it ain't okay. Well, we, we won't have this, and we won't get to do this, and we had planned for this. And, and that's what the, this is what the Lord told me. He said, Keith, you're being unthankful. Man, it hit me like a, like a ton of bricks. I thought, What? I'm thinking, you know, give me a little break here. I'm, I mean, <laughs> you know, a day or two to, to grieve. He said, son, you're being unthankful. He said, so many children never have a father. And some wish they'd never met the one they had. And some never knew their, their dad. He said, do you know how many days and how many hours I gave to you with him? I said, no, sir. He said, won't you figure it up? <laughs> I said, I will. I, I took a calculator. No? I figured it up. Man, the number of hours was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours and good times and rich times. And he said, do, do you not appreciate that? I said, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, I do. And, and let me just add to it. Why do we think it's not going to change? We should know it's going to change. Right? Why are we so shocked when people go home? We should know. Everybody is on their way out of here. Yes. Everybody. Yes. You included. Everybody. Amen. I got a hold of myself. I said, I'm sorry, Lord. I, you're right. You're right. Man. I had a dad love me all my life long and, and, and mom loved me all my life long and, 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 and still good relationship as a man and we got to share so many things and he got to see me in the ministry. He got to rejoice and be a part of so many things. I'm sorry, you're right. Forgive me, I repent. And I started thanking God. 
and things started changing. Oh, come on, help me. They started changing in my soul. They started changing in my mind. And my feelings begin to change. Oh, come on, come on, help me. Do you see what I'm talking about? What happened? I started looking at something else. I didn't lose him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting me eat popsicles when I was in a diaper with my daddy at 2 in the morning. He worked the night shift. Thank you, Lord. My daddy taught me how to ride, a, and my mom too, how to ride a bicycle and, and how to ride a mini bike and, and how to get rubber in second gear in a Mustang <laughs> and how to shoot a shotgun and how to fight and all kind of stuff. Rich. I'm blessed. What am I doing? Focusing on a year that I thought I didn't have. I mean, that's being unthankful. That's, that's being darkened in your understanding. It's being... Foolish, isn't it? Thought, man, I had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours. And then he spot, I got stirred up thinking and thinking I'm feeling better already. And then he said, and here's something else. Of course, he talks to you the way you understand. He said, you're talking about these things that you wanted to do and had hoped to do. He said, who said you won't get to do them? He said, your dad is not just in your past. He's in your future. Oh, glory to God. He said, who said you won't get to do some of those things? He said, some of those things you get here, you get reunited, you won't care about. But others you will still get to do. Glory. So now I can go ahead and thank God for what hasn't happened yet. Oh, come on, can you see? I'm thanking God for all that has happened, and I'm thanking God for what's going to happen, and it jerked me right out of darkness, jerked my soul right out of self-pity and any kind of, come on, feelings that would pull you down and hold you down. I'm talking about thanksgiving victory. Stand up on your feet, everybody.